The entire team at M Salation want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We want to recognise that we are recording and telling our stories on the stolen land of our country's first storytellers. We wish to pay our respects to all Wurundjeri elders and ancestors and to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples who listen to M Salation. We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's continued connection to the land and waters of this country and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be. I'll just say, I did a, I did an autism over everyone. I did an autism on, on top of everyone's face. And Michael Lucas. I do remember that Jennifer Lopez's Love Don't Cost a Thing video came out. I remember looking at it through the smoke and feeling attracted to her and thinking, well, you are straight. <laughs> this is Emsolation. When I go and Google image Billy Ray and his partner, I just imagine there's an do it. Under full moon rubbing of amethyst on genital action. That's just the first thing that springs to my mind when I think, like, you all do not, you all have feathers hanging in your hair. You're in insulation. Do you like my new glasses? Yes. Don't you like them? You can tell me the truth. No, I like them, but I'm only, I must admit I was only just observing them right then. And what I like about them is they look like they come from the land of Oz. Yes, they're green. And gold. It's my favourite colour. Oh, it looks like they're gold. They're green and gold. Yeah. Mm. But not only that, as I have previously stated, I ran in with a real aesthetic in mind. I wanted Egon from the Ghostbusters meets genetic scientist at a dinosaur theme park. Combined. <laughs> How did they track that at OPSM? <laughs> they, they did quite well. They have done quite I well. had a no, I I searched the store and then I asked to look at things out the back because mm. I was quite I knew I'd seen a shot of Egon on some Ghostbusters nerd page I was on. I'm like, I love his glasses. But there's a real risk that I could go a little bit Harry Potter-esque. So they have to have the tiny little cat eye okay. at the end, which okay. then leads me into female dinosaur geneticist scientist territory with the little cat okay, eye. Okay, yeah, I see. And it's a delicate frame. Normally I have quite a heavy frame. So I think it's quite you like do, actually. it's quite softening. It is. It's lovely. You know, it makes I do it... love that you force your way out the back of. I love the <laughs> report goes out. A woman yeah. has held up an OPSM for it money. Wasn't no, OPSM. she was hyper fixating on a particular style yeah. of glasses that represent an aesthetic from Ghostbusters and Jurassic Park. And Jurassic Park. No, I wasn't OPSM. It was okay. just a little place near where I live. Okay. And I did ask to see every old style they had. Mm. And I don't think that is like that's no. I gotta wear this on my face. You do. And when I have an aesthetic and there were three young oh, you gays commit. working in there. You commit. Yeah. You was... commit, but then you change. <laughs> so oh, let's enjoy change. this while we can. <laughs> no, I'm really leaning into it. Could be a librarian. Very librarian. I've got Linda Day from Press Gang Vibes hair short to the side. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that side questing? We haven't even started the podcast. Did you see that Jennifer Saunders was a judge on The Masked Singer in the UK and Safi revealed herself as one of the... She hadn't picked her? Nah. <laughs> what a victory. Such a great oh, reveal. What a television moment. I'm oh. so happy for the Brits that they got to experience that. You should have seen Jennifer's face when the, when the monster head came off and I don't know the actor's name. He played Safi. What's her name in real life? Linda Day. Julia Sawala. Good. That's it. Oh, I mean, that is fucking... Well, she's press gang too. Yeah, Linda and Day. And chicken run. And Spike and the rat one. Anyway, Spike from Press Gang is in he's something. He's a director. No, he's became a director, and he made I think Bohemian Rhapsody. Right. After no, wait a minute. He made Rocket Man. He made something. I think he took over. I think he made Rocket Man. I think he took over Bohemian right. Rhapsody when the original director was too drug fucked. Are right? you sure? Because it feels I... like a long story, but I'm committing Spike to it. Spike Press Gang. <laughs> he's dr- live Google. God, I love Press Gang. Press Gang was just. Oh, okay. I'm really backing myself Spike in. Spike from Press Gang. No, because his name is what's his name? Dexter Fletcher. Yes. Great name. Yeah. And, and Je- Dexter Fletcher. Dexter Fletcher. Are you doing it too? Wait. Dexter Fletcher Great movies. Name. Here we go. Dexter. I'm Linda Day. ODB. Yeah. So he definitely did Rocket Man. Here he is. Here. He um directed Dexter Fletcher's. Co- okay, so he's done. Eddie. Yeah, Rocket Man's Rocket the main Man. one. But Ghosted I'm... was terrible. Was it? Oh god, yeah. Well, he's doing Sherlock Holmes 3 at the moment. Good for Spike. But I think And he truly was 45 in high school. That guy looked older than Dylan and Andrea Zuckerman combined. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. 
Jeez, we've really cycled. I'm looking up when I just need to know. Yeah, okay, he did take on Bohemian Rhapsody. It's uncredited, but they got rid of the main director. He took it on. Really? Mm. Why mm. were we here? Backtrack, backtrack. We were um, we were talking about Marsing. We were talking about uh, we were talking about Safi being revealed, which would be the basic. That is essentially would be the same as if Jane Turner could not pick Gina Riley. So true. So true. Maybe Bit of not quite difference. the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah. also because Gina Riley has a singing voice that we all know. It's good. Well, yeah. Well, gays know. We and know. we were <laughs> we were there because of my hair and glasses were a bit Linda Day. From Press Game. Wow. Um, so let's start the podcast. Hello and welcome to <laughs> Emsolation. My name is Em Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand up comedian, a maximalist power queen, a neurodivergent magic brain, and a podcaster. And together with my best friends since I was 11, award winning screenwriter, Mr. Michael Lucas. Good morning, afternoon. Hello. Hi, gay. I bring you this podcast every week. Welcome. Bit of housekeeping before we do get into things. First of all, our two live shows at the Malt House are mm. now available to rent. All the details are in our bio on our Instagram. I just want to remind you, go to Instagram for everything, at Emsolation Podcast. It, the link there has got all the things. Ben does it all. It's great. What were our other housekeeping things, Benjamin? Uh, oh. Subscribe to Extra, for God's sake. Yes. And give that, our grid some love. Give our check the grid. Give the grid some love. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about first, and you have absolutely no choice in this matter. Okay. F one. There's so much going on. There's so much going on. And for those of you who don't know, I my special interest topic is F one racing, and I know that may seem strange, but. <laughs> It is. And it has been my whole life. And the reason being, my father is a massive petrol head. And when I was little, I had a lot of trouble sleeping. And my dad, every second Sunday, would be up at two o'clock in the morning watching the Grand Prix on the telly. And he would let me crawl into the couch and lay with him while oh, the Grand Prix was on. So it's lulling and comforting for yeah, you. Yeah. So that I was never, like, mum used to always send me back to bed when I couldn't sleep. But I knew every second Sunday night, I would be able to stay up because dad would be up. So that grew my love of the Grand Prix. And also my dad's a man of few words and he only speaks about things he's truly interested in. What? Um, and so what I realised I could about? engage my father mm. on F1 mm. and we would sit very silently, silently in the car for hours and hours mm. and then I'd remember something I'd read about F1 in the newspaper mm. uh, and I'd bring it up with him and I'd save facts to bring up with dad so we'd have something to talk uh. about. So F1 for me is... It's your love language. Yeah, totally. Not so much me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, gay. Well, wow. and also, no, because I was a waiter at the Formula One. Were you? Yes, in British American racing in the 90s. And it was back in the era where you could smoke indoors and because oh. it was sponsored by some cigarette company. All, the, all of them. And um, I just remember wandering around inhaling smoke and you had to wear earplugs because it was so noisy. I couldn't see the races. I just yeah. had to hear it constantly. And yeah. I was just, it was it was gross. I do remember that Jennifer Lopez's Love Don't Cost a Thing video came out. And I remember looking at it through the smoke and feeling attracted to her and thinking, well, you are straight. <laughs> That's how confused I was at the Hi, time. Gay. Did you hear? <laughs> JLo and Kelly Rowland got into it. Because got into a fight. Yeah. Well, not directly, but indirectly. So they were both booked on the Today Show in the US mm -hmm. and Kelly Rowland turned up. She'd flown in from LA to do it and was given a tiny change room that she couldn't fit anything into. And she cracked it and left. Turns out J Lo had been given the large oh. change room. They were there at the same time. Mm. So Kelly stormed off, didn't do the show. Luckily, Rita Aura was around the corner, dressed and ready to go. As as I mean, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. And I feel like that's Rita Aura's mantra. <laughs> that's right. I Does saw she, those pictures of Taylor Swift. She was ready to take the stage. Yeah, so she just rolled into the D Today Show to fill Kelly Rowland's spot because Kelly Rowland pissed off because she was cracked at the J-Lo got the big change wow. room. Wow. It's always J-Lo. Kelly Rowland doesn't need any more promotion because Tina, Beyonce's mother, is doing it all for her. Every time I click on, it's amazing. I love Tina. So anyway, sorry. Back to F1. Formula One. Well, I found out this morning we were maybe not going to go because last year it was so stressful. And to get tickets, you need to understand this is now the most exclusive, impossible event Tickets have been sold out for You're almost... You're saying it's more than Taylor? Yes. Really? This has been sold out for a year. Okay. You can't get tickets. You can't even get G-Pub tickets anymore. Right. Uh, also, with my dad, he likes to sit above pit lane, perched on a stool, Eric Banner behind him, because above pit lane, that's where the, the cars come in and get all their tyre changes, pit stops, right? Yes. You, you no, I, literally... do I do understand that. Okay. Yes. And so... I played Super Mario <laughs> Kart. <laughs> wow. Hi, gay. Also... 
No. And Can you buy a ticket for Behind no, Derek Banner? Is that a category no, of seating? No, you cannot. <laughs> no, you just so have to. Yeah. that area is called the paddock. And the paddock, you have to be, it's A-listers, and I'm talking proper A-listers, like a Blanchette, a Banner, you know, um, Olympic gold medalists, a Sam Kerr, that kind of thing. Travis Kelsey. A Travis Kelsey, if he was so. Oh, did you hear? Oh, <laughs> Old mate retired. His brother, Jason. He's quit football. Oh. Probably for the best. He's got shit knees. Really? Yeah. The podcast will still keep going. Yeah, though. the podcast will still. And that guy is going to blow out. <laughs> he has been waiting to eat, oh, I can tell. Oh, he's not a slender man. No, as he's it a big. Is. He's yeah. a big. Well, like, oh, that's such is the job. But he has had to keep himself relatively in check. But that man okay. loves food and he's not going to be moving around much for a little while because he's going to have probably some operations. So I'm looking forward to that era for him. So the paddock is nearly impossible to get a okay. ticket to. But in past years I've been lucky enough to somehow snag in. But this year I, I just don't no think ticket. it's possible. Oh. So we have been given a great ticket for Dad and I to sit on a chicane. It's still hospitality. It's still great. It's still amazing. I'm very grateful. But it's I, not good enough. It, I, Dad is like I rang in this morning and I said, I got the tickets. We're going. So lovely. The Grand Prix are having us there. And we're sitting in, I would say there's tier one, which is paddock. Tier two is where we're going to be. Okay. It's fine. It's great. Nothing, yeah, nothing to be ashamed of. And it's like, okay, great. Are we above pits? And I was like, oh. <sighs> oh, no. No. I said, No. You know. But it's like, it's okay. It's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't care. I don't care. But I, 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 oh. I, I would like to be able to deliver. So oh, I'm going to keep trying. I may not understand racing, but I understand premium seating. Yeah. And it's not because I want to be with, I don't give a shit about the celebrities. No. I don't give a shit about being seen. The proximity to the action. Thank you. That's mm. what I care and about. And the process, which yes. is what he was. Oh, my dad is such a process guy. So if any emsolators have any ins to the paddock, any engineers, anyone who, like, knows someone at, I want to say, Heineken or Ferrari or Red Bull. We just want to get Vincey above the okay, pits. Cool, that's cool. Would that's you, like, <laughs> is there, would you do a private concert to pay them back? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, F1's going off at the moment. Max Verstappen took out Bahrain, and he is honestly at 27 unstoppable. He won by 20 seconds to poor Sergio Perez, who's number two at Red Bull, right? But even though he's number two and comes second a lot, his contract is up this year, and I really think he's in danger because Carlos Sainz's contract is also up. He's obviously leaving Ferrari because Lewis is sliding in, leaving Mercedes. So there's a seat open at Mercedes. So it could be a, fat, a battle between Carlos and Perez because I would like to see Carlos at F1, but I don't think that Max would like that because they would be battling it out. And Max loves to be number one at Red Bull. So we're going into Saudi Arabia this weekend. H- super problematic. I know, gross, yuck. But then we are, round three is in Melbourne. So I'm really hoping it's not a boring season because Max won by so much on the weekend in Bahrain. The Rebels look unstoppable, but they have a shit one lap pace. So they're having terrible qualifying. They qualify fifth, end up winning. So what they need to improve at Red Bull, people would say, you can't improve the car. They fucking won by 20 seconds. But I would argue their one lap speed is shit. And if you're going to have terrible one laps, you might keep pulling down the, the line. And no matter how good you are, if you're starting from the back of the grid, winning is very hard. Now, some would say because Sergio is coming second, that Red Bull will re-sign him because his contract is up. But... I say no because he's too far behind Max. He's got to get closer up. It's very interesting. So many drivers are up for negotiation. And Daniel Ricciardo will be driving, but his car team now is called the Visa Cap Ash Red Bull. I mean, could you think Visa Cash App? That is not a prestigious car name. I drive for Ferrari. I drive for Mercedes. I drive for Visa Cap Ash. Cap Mm. Cash App. Can't even say it. Visa Cap. Can't say it. Visa Cash App. Can't even say it. It's not catchy. No. It's not catchy. But don't worry, Danny Rick will be there. Um, so we've got Esteban Ocon is up for contractual at Alpine. Pierre Gasly signed his multi-year deal. Fernando is on a multi-year deal, which is amazing. Lance Stroll rolling contract. Oh, daddy owns the company. So I'm really looking forward to uh, – I don't want the season to be dominated by Max is what I'm saying. It's like I need – I can't have every race. He's so far out in front that, like, what's in it for me as a viewer? And I think F1 know that. I feel, I feel like they know that. I'm sure they do. <laughs> okay, do you have any questions? No, I just I just discovered I can disassociate. <laughs> no. Um, my question is. Yep. Kelsey, ask me any question about F1. Go on. Will win. Well, Max, Red Bull. Okay. Yeah. Cool, but cool. ideally, Mercedes want to get up there because Lewis Hamilton's trying to okay. get. Okay, so Lewis Hamilton wants to be the greatest F one driver. I really of, thought I'd had a one word answer question. <laughs> no, but like Lewis Hamilton wants to be the greatest F one driver of all time. He's the one from Mercedes. One Direction. No, got it. <laughs> he dated Nicole Schlesinger from the Pussycat Dolls. 
Do you remember that? Yeah, right. Do you remember? I still think that was One Direction, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Mm, no. I don't so, know. So, you know the greatest, if I say to you, who is considered the greatest F1 driver of all time? Had a tragic skiing incident. Michael has- Schumacher. Yes! Oh! <gasps> <laughs> So Schumacher is still the greatest. Is he still alive? Yes, but never been seen since. We're in a Kate Middleton situation, but extended years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyway, um, Lewis wants to be considered the greatest driver at all time. The greatest mm. driver of all time is Michael Schumacher did it at Ferrari. Mm, mm. Lewis is joining Ferrari next mm. year. He only needs one more championship to mm. beat Schumacher's record. Mm. He wants that shit. So mm. he's going there next year. Mm. Lewis has given up. The other thing about Carlos, so Carlos is the driver that Lewis will be replacing at Ferrari. Mm. Carlos Sainz is a very good driver. He's excellent. Mm. And he now, because he's leaving Ferrari, he's driving like a fucking man possessed. Do you know when people announce they're leaving and then they have the best season of their life? Mm. That's what's happening with Carlos. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mm -hmm. God, the boredom. (laughs) Yes. It's like succession. It's succession, but Ferrari. Right, okay. All right. All right. Oh, fine. No, it's fine. It's good. I should say, How I've been people? up till 5 a.m. in the morning. I love that this is the time when we unleash the F1 chat. How many people? For Michael Schumacher, that was amazing. Well done. How many people do you think like wanted to skip forward? Everyone? <laughs> I'd be interested to find out. You should, should do a little warm? poll. Yeah, I think we should maybe, Ooh, yeah, maybe we should insert how, when they should skip to. I'll just say I did a, I did an autism over everyone. I did an autism on, on top of everyone's okay. face. I reckon it's important they hear how quickly you can work through it. I think it's important that I don't, yeah, I think that was the longest sustained sentence I've ever yeah. heard in my life. It was incredible. I'm not sure there were full stops in there anywhere. Where was the breathing? Can you imagine how painful it is for me when I have to talk to normies about anything? Mm. Do you know how slow I have to move in everyday life? Even with you. Right. No, I do. There's no one that I know that I've met that keeps up with my cella. Mm. Cella keeps up with my mind hopping. Mm. But otherwise, nah, it's it's tough. Mm. Like right now, through molasses, like J Lo in the mud. Fucking yes, J Lo in the mud. Okay, now what I want to talk to you about. I did send you what's going on at the Cyrus family. I did let you know about Tish and Noah and Dominic. Quite the drama, yes. So this has a chokehold on me and I'm trying Mm. to get it out of my system and I'm trying to understand, has there ever been an example in the past of this happening amongst such famous people? For those of you who are unaware, Tish Cyrus obviously is Miley Cyrus's mother, formerly married to Billy Ray Cyrus. That's right. For many years. Many. They separated, divorced, and Tish has ended up marrying Australian actor Dominic Purcell from Prison Break fame. Yes. He uh, has now come to light has also dated somebody Tish knows quite well, her daughter Noah. <laughs> yes. Turns Miley's out. Miley's sister. M- Miley's sister. And we would also remember that Miley did not thank Billy Ray at the Grammys. No. When she won. Billy Ray has also remarried a much younger woman. Who, shocked. Shocked. What? Ha, ha, what? Um, who's a bit crystal woo-woo-y. Mm. I believe, I want to say, can we confirm this, Ben? Also Australian. Dominic Purcell. No, no, no. Billy Ray Cyrus's new wife. I want to oh, say. Wow, there is a kink for Australians yeah. in that family. Oh. Well, right, Liam. Exactly. Clearly. Multiple times, in and out. <laughs> and out again. Hi, gay. Yeah, so. <laughs> so the conjecture is apparently. Do you think Liam? I'm sorry, I'm just absorbing that. Are you, are you, was that a slight suggestion that a Hemsworth brother? What? Could have some form. No, of you said in and out. I was talking about Dick and Vatch. <laughs> oh, she is an oh, Australian singer. Okay, all right, yeah. She's Australian, isn't she? Fire Rose. Wow. Oh, of course, her name's is Fire that Rose. A real name? No, not her birth name. She's woo wooey. I reckon Billy's. I reckon. I reckon if we looked into it, Billy's living in the hinterland somewhere, eating a lot of cookies. That is amazing, though. It's like Australia's done a diplomatic mission to the <laughs> Cyrus family. It's true. Very successfully. So many Australian partners. When one ambassador lost their position, we sent in two more. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I go and Google image Billy Ray and his partner, I just imagine there's a, under do it under full moon rubbing of amethyst on genital action. That's just the <laughs> first thing that springs to my mind when I see them. Like you all do not, you all have feathers hanging in your hair. Like there, it's there's a lot of white people. Hi Rose, wow, not her real name. Is I just it? want to say, I doubt it. I highly doubt it. They will. They are definitely living in the Byron Bay hinterlands. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. I'm Brad. Yeah, Billy Ray's really going through his spiritual phase. Well, they teamed up with for a musical collaboration. 
Thank God. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's what the world wants. Well, Miley hasn't spoken to him in a very long time and apparently mm. it's over this woman. Okay. So it appears Miley's gone team Tish and Noah is team Billy Ray because on the day that Tish married Dominic Purcell, Noah did not attend the wedding mm. and was seen shopping at a, a some supermarket wearing a Billy Ray Cyrus merch T-shirt on the day of her mother's wedding to the new man. Oh, okay. it's the kind of pettiness. But it's the kind of pettiness you can't Respect. help but appreciate. Yeah. Did you know Fire Rose auditioned for Hannah Montana and that's where they oh originally met? Well, and okay. Jesus Christ. Hang on she a was minute. auditioning to play his daughter. Wait. <laughs> okay, that's why. Bi- uh, uh, as Hannah Montana. How so old is she? Or just auditioned is to be she part. She auditioned over a decade ago, so she would have just been a. No, but how old is she right now? 34. And how old is Miley Cyrus right now? <sighs> 29 or something. No, Miley's in her 30s. Is she? How old is Miley Cyrus? 31. 31. They also, knew are we sure she's not Elsa Patatsky as well, living a double <laughs> life? Okay, so I'm going to hypothesise that Miley's not speaking to her dad about this because he's known her like since this person She's was- got the ick. Oh, my oh. God. Billy Ray. That would be like if your dad started going out. <laughs> <laughs> I just can never see that happening ever in my life. No, I think it's so <laughs> the thing with Tish and Noah and Dominique is that Dominique and Noah are apparently in what the kids call a situationship for nine months. That's sex with no commitment. A situationship. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you for bringing me the youth lingo. <laughs> <laughs> I am the ambassador to the youth. Yeah. Uh, and Dom and Nick slid into Tish's DMs as far back as 2016. Yeah. But Tish was with Billy then still and ignored them. Okay. Of course she did. And Faithful then woman. she realised um, that Dominic had done this when they got together and she well, he'd blocked her on Instagram and he's like, I didn't block you. Turns out Noah went into Dominic's Instagram and blocked Tish. Mm. Right? Mm. So anyway, um, Tish and Dominique started, I don't know why I've made him French all of a sudden. Dom Dominique. Have started dating while him and Noah were still together. So mother has stolen daughter's oh. boyfriend and married him. I, I mean. mean. It feels like something that would happen to Lisa Bonet, but... She Tell me would more, manage say it. more, say more. Well, Lisa Bonet, you know, remember she went from Lenny Kravitz to Jason Momoa and everything, yep. but I feel like she would manage it. You know, she would take people on healing walks with donkeys and they would, everything would be fine. They'd all have Christmas together. <laughs> donkeys are very soothing. I see why you went there. Well, do you remember that footage of her yeah. roaming around with the donkey? Yeah. Yeah. But I just, I'm so obsessed with the fact that mother has stolen daughter's, daughter's boyfriend and married That's him. right. And let's not forget, Noah's in her mid twenties, and Dominique Purcell is fifty four. Mm. So there's there's my first red flag. Yeah. And I've gone and looked at this man, and when you Google image Dominic Purcell, he's not a prize. He's the. I mean, I don't know that I'd be blowing up my family over this man. Yeah. No. I, I feel very strongly about no. this. So I'm obviously got Google alerts on this whole scenario, and yep. I, the whole, I I you need to all get around Billy Ray, Fire Rose, Miley. And Noah. Okay. And just be aware of the what fucking Christmas must be like. Is this hyperfixation slightly unsettling for Chella? <laughs> <laughs> yes. She loves Miley. Thoughts and prayers no, on and the new film? and also because... <laughs> what? You think I'm... She has a young mum. Yeah. Oh. You think I might try and date Chella's boyfriends? Oh, yeah. You've declared yourself at peak hot. I am peak hot. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been hotter. I just <laughs> want to put it out there. Yeah. But... Odie starts wandering around in a Scott Barrow t-shirt, which you've already given her. <laughs> What are you implying Nothing. right now? No. I don't even know how to draw those nefarious dots. Join them. No. Um, You've never been interested in one of Chella's boyfriends. Yes, well, Chella dates women too. So, and Chella's never had a boyfriend. Chella has, okay, Odie calls Chella's, uh, the people that Chella sees her side hoes. <laughs> Chella got on the wrong train last night and was texting us, get picked up. And Odie literally sent back a text message. Pick up one said, of your side hoes. Get one of your yeah. side hoes to bring Chella doesn't. P.S. Chella does not have side hoes. Whatever the opposite of a side hoe is, is my daughter's romantic life currently. Yeah, she's she's watched too many dodgy yeah. romantic comedies. Everything's we all ruined. Know that. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's absolutely absorbed all the wrong teachings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you heard Miley's new song with Pharrell? Well, no, because you, oh, I haven't yet. You said not not great. It's not great. It just doesn't go anywhere. Mm. But we do see why she wore that hair to the Grammys. Because she's got oh, the big lion's mane in the okay. film clip. I feel like Miley, she'll give you a banger 
and then you'll go through three or four years of just songs that you don't care about and then she'll just out of nowhere she'll come back with another absolute barnstorm. Can I make a prediction? You'll yeah. like this one. I think I think uh just get it up on your phone. Just 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 put it just play it and just play a little bit of it. I'm I predict that you'll you'll like it. Oh, why is it gay? Just be- <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's novelty. It's true. You know, I need to listen to things. No, I feel like you'll like this one straight away. Is it away. called Doctor Work It Out? Yeah, because you're a basic bitch with music. <laughs> he is. I like Pharrell. That's all it does, though, for three minutes. I mean, I don't know. It just it does feels, that. I feel, I understand why you've developed that theory because I was a defender of Katy Perry's Bon Appetit. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. I genuinely love Katy Perry's swish swish. So the exact moment where she was shedding fans, she's never recovered. If people knew how long we spent on Saturday night at dinner discussing the fall of Katy Perry and what we felt could bring her back. I think about it a lot. I think about it all the time. You and I spent a good portion of dinner on Saturday I night. I listened to a riveting podcast that oh, yeah. broke down the music of the 2010s. What was it about? Oh. What were the trends? And and This is your F1. There was a fascinating theory mm. which was that the first half of the 2010s, intensely female dominated. Right. Like it was Gaga. So it true. was Katy Perry. It was yes. Adele. Yes. It was, um, and then there was a pivot point and they said that the pivot point was Bruno Mars's Uptown Funk and then it just became Drake and it became men, 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 Justin Bieber. Yes. And the second half of the 2010s, it was like there was this huge gender flip that happened and you remember Taylor peaked with 1989, but remember she did go through a little bit of a fall. Like it was, she was still obviously selling b- truckloads of albums. But do you know who won the 2010s? The only star they said that really managed to pivot through all of the 2010s, Rihanna. Rihanna, Rihanna. because she See and, they, and they ticked off. See how, how I'm interested in your hyper focus. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. Oh come on, it's yours too. <laughs> she she did EDM. Yeah, we found love. She's fucking and then she did. Shame. And then when Adele was doing ballads, she was singing Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Yeah, and then she she found Drake. You know what? Speaking of Rihanna, (laughs) when are we not? Have you seen the out of retirement performance at the billion dollar wedding? What is it with stars doing billion dollar gigs at the moment? I mean, is it about the money? I was going to (laughs) ask, does Rihanna need the money? Isn't she a billionaire? I wonder about that. That was like Beyonce going to the... Because mm. that was just... The United Arado, Arab Emirates. Yes, yeah. and they're very non-gay. She was about to do a big queer album. It was weird. And she just clearly had had surgery because she was barely moving. Yeah, she had a foot surgery. And it was not... She couldn't sing any of the new album. It was strange. Although we well, did get that strange, one iconic... Then... Ah, you know that oh, run yeah, that yeah, she does? Yeah, yeah. She did that one. We got that one run. Yeah, right. Rihanna was paid $9 million to perform her greatest hits, which she did, and she did it in an iconic Rihanna fashion in that zero Barely fucks were giving. given. Yeah, stoned, <laughs> just had a gummy. She bought a whole stage set. She had crates. She had dancers. It was it was staged. She, um, But in true Rihanna style, just gave the bare minimum. And I was discussing with Ben yesterday, I am so drawn to people who are – Extremely successful, seemingly given no giving no fucks about stuff. Mm. Like Dakota Johnson, that was so exciting for me when she didn't give a shit about her multi-million mm. dollar Marvel movie. And the same with Rihanna. Rihanna has shown up and done the bare minimum. And when you watch the videos, I don't even know if she was aware of where she was. And I respect it. <laughs> but one thing about her though, and the, and the, the podcast that I have her fixated on went on about this, she does a lot of, like, collaborations and guest work on right. singles, huge amounts. But doesn't matter who you put her with, she always ends up being the star of the single. Like, think yeah. about that Paul McCartney single. I can't even sing her. Like, he, her verses. I remember the Eminem song? Yeah. Like, Everything. she just commands yeah. as soon, effortlessly. She has. She blows everyone else away. Natural born What would charisma. happen if her and Beyonce ever sung together? They won't. You know why. I know your theories. We can't talk about it because I don't want to get sued, but I have spent hours dissecting this with Michael. There's more than a hypothesis. So I respect it. I respect the fact that she showed up and did the bare mins. Go watch the video. They're very entertaining. Okay, all right. And good for her, honestly. Mm. I said good for her. That wedding, the guest, Mark Zuckerberg, um, Um, Amazon walnuts in a condom guy. What's his name? Bezos. Bezos, his wife. Mm -hmm. Like it was just billionaire row. Just insane. Mm. But sure, whatever. Take their money and run. Good for you. Good for her. Good for her. Look, probably cooler than Anthony Pratt, which is where Katy Perry's ended up. Oh, no. Yeah, she's saying she did a Melbourne gig. That's why she was in Australia. Is that the one that Anthony Albanese went to? Yeah. Is that why she was here? 
Yeah. I wonder what I wonder what she cost. Only three songs, I think. As well. How much does she cost? Not not not, not nine billion dollars million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katie, just some good tickets to Taylor Swift, maybe. That's what she got paid. Oh. To be fair, oh. excellent little Instagram reel she put up about bad blood. Funny. I enjoyed it. I don't think Taylor was saw any of that or knew that was going on. Well, also the picture of her and Taylor that was she put up was not taken on that. Night. I love this. I sent Michael a photo of Taylor and Katie and he shot back so quick I could feel the gay venom. That's not. That wasn't taken. Why did, what did you say? That wasn't taken recently. There's no, no MGM. What did you yeah, say? Yeah, it was MGM Grand in the background. That's not Sydney. <laughs> Hi, gay. <laughs> All right, before you go, before we do the sealed section, sealed section we're going to be talking about my Kate Middleton Camilla oh, theories. Oh, my God. You've really, you're putting the juice in the behind a paywall today, aren't you? But what I want to say is, you know my... I my, think we disagree on it too. My attitude is leave Kate Middleton alone. Oh, yeah, and I, that's what I disagree with. I want to talk about that, but <laughs> no, I also... I mean, I would love to have that attitude, unfortunately... Our tax dollars are going to her, so sorry. All right, well, you, you, that's all you happening. Dug your grave. Woo! This is all happening in the sealed section. I'm also going to tell you why I think Camilla's pulling a salt burn. You've oh. shared this with me. <laughs> Actually, I think there's 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 Great. elements of your theory that you Great. could expand upon. I will. Okay, that's all coming up in the sealed section. But before we get to that, I want to tell you, um, I got myself a really good vacuum cleaner, <laughs> and it's fucking life changing. Thank God you let. Is this sponsored? I uh, no. Is it a robot? I'm not I'm not going to say what the brand is because it's not sponsors. They want to sponsor us, they should. So I'm obsessed with vacuuming, always have been. I love vacuuming. I love a good vacuum. I love a clear barrel so I can see all the crap coming off my carpet. But my quest for the perfect vacuum, it's been a 20-year quest oh. because I've had a very – I refuse to buy one brand, which is the top-of-the-line brand, that I refuse to pay that much money for a vacuum cleaner. Mm-hmm. It's like the cost of like a small shitty car. So you've – Committed to a 20-year quest to get out of paying that yes. price. And I have, when I figured out how many other brands of vacuums I've bought, I have spent basically the cost of a good car on vacuum Have there cleaners. ever been times where you've bought one, bought it home, just instantly started yes. being like, no! Yes. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. I, I've, had, I've put, there, there was discarded vacuum cleaners. I own currently nine vacuum cleaners. Where do you keep them? Various places. Tour at my parents. My dad tried to rewire one. He blew it up. I tried to get what him to make you, it more powerful. Surprised he didn't try to turn it into an iPhone or something. <laughs> or a V8. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, and then the last one we got, Scott was determined for it to fail. Because as soon as I got it in, he said, that's not going to be any good. I said, how dare you? I researched this. You backed it. And I, it did work quite well, but it, you had to do a series of delicate manoeuvres to get it to work properly. And it, it didn't handle our carpets very well. But as long mm, as you emptied the mm, drum quite mm. regularly, it was doing its job. Okay. But Scott was very rough with it. He didn't respect the integrity of the vacuum and he fucking broke it. And he says he didn't break it, but I don't believe him. So we had a big fight about the broken vacuum cleaner. I like you. And then weeks and weeks go by and I go, I'm not buying a new vacuum cleaner. You have to replace the one you broke. He's like, I didn't break it. Mm. So finally I relented and I went and I was, I don't know what came over me. I was at one of the, the big, the good guys or wherever I was. And I saw that the top of the line was on sale. <gasps> the one that you've resisted buying. For 20 for years. Wow. A fucking 20 years. I did a installments PayPal on it. That's how expensive it was. I'm paying it off in installments. Right. Jesus. Because Wait, can we just get a ballpark? Is it like, are we talking... A four-figure price? No. Yes. <gasps> yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus. Barely. But it just. is. It is. <laughs> but I bought it in installments. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, that's like it doesn't count then. Well, it's no. For me, it feels like I only paid $300 because that's yeah, all I thought, paid on the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in yeah. my mind, I tricked myself. I'm like, you haven't failed. You haven't given in and bought what everyone told you to buy in the first place. Mm. And I got this thing home. Mm. Oh, my God. Was it the closest you've come Orgasm. to sexual satisfaction? I knew you were going to say that. Did you then have to go and sort of slide out on the carpet afterwards and just sort of yep. roll in it just knowing, and like, curating? And I could. And I could because mm. the carpet well, was... Well, you've got a little person who I imagine... So clean. I also have two dogs. Oh, yeah. One you've that sheds like a carpet. motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, my God, Michael. I don't know... I don't know how I've lived this long without this fucking good. I was so good. And now i just like, oh, but Scott's banned from it. Scott's not allowed to use it. He's not allowed to touch it. And Elio, who is a rule follower, autism, thank goodness he's a rule follower. He polices it. He knows if I'm not there, dad is not to be seen with the vacuum cleaner, not to be seen. <laughs> Have you ever considered that this might actually be a win for Scott? No. I, mean, I wouldn't mind the deal of you can. He likes vacuuming too. Cannot. That's the only thing he likes doing. Really? Yeah, I'm taking really away joy. Sucked in Scott. You can't suck. <laughs> it's the closest Scott's going to... No, I'm not going to make that joke because we're not on stage. 
I'm not going to make that joke because I am not in stand-up mode right now. But if you've seen my stand-up shows, imagine the joke I might make around a highly... Why is my mother phoning me? She knows I'm recording. This woman is on a mission. No, decline. Oh, hang on. Hello? Oh, hello. Yes, uh, I'm just recording. Are you, can I, is it, are you okay or can I call you back? Oh, good. Thank oh, we, you. I enjoyed it, Jenny. Oh, Je- M- Michael's here. Says hello. Lovely to hear from Hi, you. Michael, how are you going? Pretty good. Okay. All right. Thanks. We're recording. Oh. Bye, Jenny. Bye. Um, <laughs> Mum's on a mission at the moment. She she broke into my storage locker that I haven't opened in five years. Where is it located? I got a storage locker five years at ago. At their house? No, it's at Fort Knox in near my house. She broke into it. No, she got she got a locksmith. So my mum found out that I had a storage locker that I got five years ago. She asked your consent. Yeah, I had okay. to sign something. Oh. I put a bunch of shit in there and I've never been back. Never in five years have I returned. And mum's like, what do you mean? Because this is like not, this is like mm. Narnia mm. for my mum. This is like catnip. She's like, oh, my God. Anything could be in there. So she went and organised a locksmith. She got my written permission. She broke in. Like it was, uh, I mean, she didn't break in. She got them to cut the lock. Yeah. She was there yesterday sorting it. So every day I'm getting a new phone call. My mum's definitely not neurodivergent. Um, getting a new phone call about the new storage locker. She's going to. She's selling all my clothes. She's got Excel spreadsheets, sheets talking about where she is in her action plan. Not neurodivergent. <laughs> my mum, on the other hand, keeps saying, "I know what I need a project," and oh. yeah, and then I'm like, and I'm like, well, actually, our courtyard, we just want to do some sort of vertical garden situation, and then she's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Scott's not allowed to use the new vacuum cleaner ever, ever. So he has to use this shitty plug-in one. You're in a house of neurodivergence. Oh, okay. We have a shitty plug-in one. Actually, it's not shitty. So you've got a class system of vacuum cleaners. Correct. He's condemned. And he has to work his way up to being allowed to use the good vacuum. (laughs) Otherwise, because we are all neurodivergent, getting a vacuum cleaner out of the cupboard, plugging it in and using it and then taking the bag out, emptying the bag. No, we need a stick. Can you be 100% sure he's not using it right now? (gasps) Don't I mean, put that thought in my... Oh, my home. God, Elio's at kinder. Oh, my God, Scott's home alone. <laughs> but I, what I love about it is he couldn't... No. You'd be able to see no, the No, you know evidence. how I know? Yes. I know I, I know what lint is in the open exposed barrel. Okay. Because I vacuumed up some tinsel and there was pink tinsel down the bottom and I wow. know it was only a quarter full. He would have to Unless empty he it. empty it, put it in a container, then do some more vacuuming, then put the old... Have you met my back. husband? <laughs> He's have not you met? Strategic. He barely remembers my birthday. Unless he just vacuums air. Just to try it. Yeah, just fucking to know, better not. Just to fuck you off. I will fucking fingerprint that thing. I'll tell ya. The last thing I want to side quest on. I found out the greatest fact about Italy and what they do. Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna say this isn't vacuum related at all. It's a little bit DNA related. Okay. It is. Italy are now working with technology that if a dog shits on your lawn. Uh, you could you collect the DNA from that dog and it can be matched to the dog if it's ever dobbed in and that dog owner will be found and fined. So uh-huh. you can now justice, find out, yeah, finally. dog shit justice. Would it and work if course, he stepped on dog shit would, and you got it off your shoe? I presume it would. Well, it depends. If, if someone's dog... How much of a sample do you need? I don't think much. But I just love that it was Italy. The country that pulled out of Eurovision because they said it was rigged because they hadn't won in many years. They're back now. <laughs> <laughs> It's my favourite thing. Italy literally said it's rigged. It's rigged. Fuck you. And they went. They're back. Yeah, they have now come up with the technology I've dreamed about. When I see people who leave their dog shit around, I'm thinking if I could fucking find out who that dog shit belongs to, if I was in Italy, I fucking could. <laughs> that is why Italians are the you best. You like mounting a case and you like your forensic evidence. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's it for now. We're going to go into the seals section where we will be having a spirited debate about Kate Middleton. Um, I did not take my riddle in this morning, as is evident by the multiple strings, talons this podcast had. Mm. Apologies for the F1 info dump. You can skip it. It's so fine. Look. It's all good. Uh, If you want to hear the Kate Middleton chat, you need to be a subscriber. Why not? It's two bucks a week. Honestly, we're worth it. Forgo, nothing costs you. It's bag of lollies. It's a bag of lollies a week. Do they still sell bags of lollies nah. at milk bars now? No. Nah. I can't even think what they it is. Were... What do you get for $2? Nothing. That was the highlight of my life. 
The bag of lollies. A little the white bars. bag of lollies at after school but at also, 30 cents. Go in there. Full credit to the boomers that sold us on the idea that this was this incredible treat that we had to lust about, work yeah. towards. And yeah. they we bought it. We were like, oh, the bag of lollies with this little. I would always, I wasn't a big fan of milk bottles. No one was. Mm. And I hated it when there was a few too many of those and I loved a raspberry. Oh, so, you know, we had a lovely guy who I would very... We spe- curate. I curated my lolly bags. Mm. No fucking bullets, gross. Mm. No teeth, no milk bottles. Mine were exclusively chocolate. No, I think, and a red skin. I loved a red skin and a chocolate. Mm. Oh, I fucking love that. I eventually worked in the mixed lolly section of the candy bar at Greek. Oh. At- yeah, but also people come in and weigh their lollies. Do you remember that system? Oh, yes, the weighing at the yes. movies. And then if they had too much, they would take some out. And my friends knew, I can reveal this now because I won't be arrested by the Hoyts organisation. <laughs> they knew to come and get all my favourite lollies and went go, oh, I need to take some out and put it in the container that men's staff got to take it home. So they would like give me, so it was like a racket and I would walk out with all these lollies. I weighed about 110 kilos at the time, which is about 30 kilos more than I weigh now <laughs> oh. <laughs> because of all of those lollies. Oh, that's why, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny now, even as an adult, I forget. I can just go buy myself lollies or a cake. You know, the stuff that was really kept from us as kids. Yeah. I forget. I can just walk into any supermarket now and buy myself mixed lollies. But don't you but feel I still like don't. you go through a bit of a phase where you find out that actually eating, like I feel like when I first moved out into share houses, like, I never did share houses. No, exactly. Well, you go through, I can drink what I want, I can eat I what I want, and then you realise, I feel disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. We're going to seal section now where we will argue about Kate Middleton and my actual salt burn Camilla Parker Bowles theory. Bye. Goodbye. All right, let's go. Let's fucking go. To enjoy today's sealed section of m upgrade your experience and join the extra family with our premium service, m Extra. You get two bonus episodes direct to your favourite podcast app every week in an exclusive feed, as well as an Ask Me Anything where Em and Michael answer your questions. There's over 70 other episodes awaiting you already, plus you'll also get Instagram close friends access, ticket pre-sales, merch discounts and heaps more. Help M keep this independent neurodivergent business alive by supporting us for less than $2 a week on our yearly plan or less than $2.50 a week on our monthly plan. Just sign up at msolation.supercast.com now. Emsolation is recorded at Down the Hill Studios, hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley, produced by M. Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn and videos by James Henderson. Socials by Benjamin Wesley, M. Rossiano and Marcella Rossiano Barrow with assistance from Jem Evans and Isabella Hines. Follow us on Instagram at Emsolation Podcast where you'll find a link in our bio so you can sign up for our weekly newsletter, join other Emsolators at the Emsolation Group on Facebook, follow our YouTube and TikTok channels and so much more. Help us out by sharing Emsolation with your friends, give us a five-star rating, and make sure you're following us by hitting the follow button on your favourite podcast app. Thanks for listening and or watching this week's episode, and we can't wait to chat with you again soon. Hello, Emsolation Extra subscribers. You are in for some fireworks, I predict. Although my co-host has only had a few hours sleep because he's doing night Wow, Well, shoots. that could, but maybe that just makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> I welcome it, quite frankly. I welcome it. This is often the source of our biggest debates, uh, anything related to the monarchy. It's true. Kate Middleton today, uh, just breaking news, has been spotted for the first time since the 25th of December. Or has she? Are we? Well, they carted Prince Philip around for a while and I did doubt if he was Can alive. Can I Google the image? Yes, please okay. Google the image. And I'll, then should I describe what I see? Yeah. So she's been seen. There's a photograph has been taken of her. It is It is allegedly her. Oh, dear me. Are you looking? Yeah. Describe what you see. Well. Yeah. She's sitting in the front car of her mother's Audi in sunglasses and a black truck top. Her mother's face is... Gee, they, Serious? you know what? They did cast the woman in the crown well because I looked at that and I thought, that is the woman from the crown. Is it Kate? 